السلام عليكم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته واهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Praise be to Allah, the beneficent, the merciful We seek refuge by Allah from the evil within ourselves and from the worst of our deeds Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, lead astray, none can, none can uh, lead him to the straight path and whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused to be led to the straight path, none can lead him astray. And I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a seal of messengers. May Allah have uh, his blessings upon him, upon his family and companions and those who follow him until the day of judgment. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, before I start my khutbah, there are so many empty spaces up the front. 
fill it up. The reward is higher for people who are in the first line, then the second line, then the third line. Uh, all of us are in need to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us are in need to increase our rewards. So please move forward and, and, uh, and uh, try to allow room for the brothers who will come late at the end. Ten days ago or so, we had a very, very cold weather coming to this area. It caused us some inconveniences. People were stranded in their homes. Some of us didn't have electricity. Some of us were stranded in their cars. Some of us didn't have chance to go and buy the food they need in time. Our kids were complaining about the electricity and the internet and not being able, being bored at home, as they say. Yes, Tariq? And maybe we heard complaints from our children, our family, maybe we complained ourselves not being able to get out and move around and so on. But these days also should be a reminder for all of us that we have Muslim brothers and sisters around the globe. They are living in worse condition in this winter. Worse conditions than the conditions we are living in. They didn't have, they don't have electricity, they don't have internet, they don't have way of communicating with each other and the world, they don't have houses and homes that they can protect them from the rain, and they are living in a miserable, miserable situation. This is the ultimate test, not we passed through in the past uh, 10 days ago. The ultimate test is when you are put in this condition for long period of time. And I just want to give you some of what I have seen, or what I have heard, of what's happening. Of course, this thing is not happening only in Gaza. I'm sure it's happening in other places in the world, in Syria, in the refugee camps, in, in uh, Afghanistan, in probably in uh, Burma, in uh, other areas around the world. But this is what I have seen lately. A boy sitting outside his tent, barefooted and shivering. The reporter comes to him and he asks him, why you are not inside? The answer is, it's as cold inside as outside. It doesn't matter. They don't have a home, they don't have a shelter. These like shacks, we call them tents. It's not like my uh, tent that I go uh, in the snow and, and, and I sleep in it. No, it's not, that's not the tent. Or the tent you take it even the summer and go camping. That's not the tent we're talking about. They have plastic bags, they make a tent from plastic bags and they live in it. And these are the lucky ones. These are the lucky ones, that they have at least some shelter but it's as cold as inside as it's outside. Think about that family that were driven recently out of their refuge, not even their home. And then they are sitting in the middle of the street. The reporter asked him why you are here. He said, we have no place to go. Don't you have a tent? No, we don't have a tent. And a little girl comes in front of him and says, Uncle, please give us a tent. 
Please give us a tent. It's not going to give them warmth. It's not going to give them anything. It's just they don't want to be seen like this. These are dignified people. These people who have nice homes. But this is, this is, this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today we have, tomorrow we might not have. What about this man who went out of his home? seeking food for his children and he has no penny to buy the food imagine how difficult it is you have no no money and you are going to seek food he finds a friend and he give him half of what he have he goes back to his home for children with food he's happy the house is demolished the children died and he throw the food and he start using his hands, his hands, to look for if there are any survivors in, in his home. Think about all of that. And also think about that we are in the month of Rajab, which is a sacred month. This is a month where we are urged not to wrong against ourselves. This is a month, the scholar said, that's where you plant the seed. And then you water it in Sha'ban and you harvest in Ramadan. I know Brother Tawab spoke about this, so I'm not going to speak about the month of Rajab last week. But imagine in this sacred month, this is happening to our brothers in Gaza and worse even. You see children in lines waiting for uh, like a, maybe a, a little bit like a handful of rice or some other food they are making. I don't know what they are making. Huge lines. And you ask yourself, why children? Why children carrying containers, standing in lines? Because these are dignified people. Their fathers and mothers will not wait in line. They would rather die than waiting in line to get food. But they send their children to get food. And whatever they get and take back home might not be even sufficient for one or two children. Imagine this child who had a pot waiting in line for hours. He comes empty-handed. And the reporter is asking him, why you are smiling and laughing? He said, I went there hoping to get some food, but then I came empty handed. So for me, it's, I'm just laughing out of, out of the situation, what we are in. He is laughing, but we should be crying. You see the sadness on the face of a child waiting for hours. And when he reached, no more food. No more food. The reason I'm bringing you these pictures is because I know 10 years ago our situation was where we were in, 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 in a situation where we were crippled, we were stopped in our homes, we were stuck, and we were complaining and this and that. Please do not complain. Do not complain. And the other thing is, always have a live heart. Remember in these situations, your brothers and sisters around the world. And this is the month of Rajab, where we are encouraged to do righteousness. And this is the month where we should take out of our wealth, remember our brothers and sisters, and donate for these causes. Don't wait, but act. And the other thing that why I'm bringing this, because sometimes people get used to it. We get used to it. Okay, one day, 10 days, 
one month, two months, three months, and then we go about doing our things without even paying attention. We shouldn't be like that. As the Prophet ﷺ told us, the Muslim to another Muslim is like a structure. We strengthen one another. We strengthen one another. We keep making dua and we keep donating for the cause and we keep thinking about them. We educate our children. We talk to them and we tell them that what's happening is a complete genocide against the Muslims. The whole world, the whole world, with its all institutions, are not capable of doing anything. Or they don't want to do anything. And two billion Muslims are watching. And the governments, as if nothing is happening. It's not our cause. Some people say, let them fight their fight. Well, they are not fighting their fight for themselves. They are fighting their fight on behalf of the Ummah. When Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa is under occupation, it's the duty of every Muslim to help in liberating it. It's not up to the people who are living there. We need to understand, we need to have this dogma, we need to have this understanding that no, it's not their fight only. It's not their fight, it's our fight. It's everybody's fight, every Muslim fight. Yes, they are suffering and doing it on our behalf, but does not mean I don't care. No, we should care. And we should always have this lively heart And some people, they say, well, what we can do? Last week, I was giving a khutbah in another masjid, and I said, the whole world have forsaken the people of Gaza, including the Muslim governments and the Arab governments. Somebody came to me and said, brother, are you telling people to revolt against the government? I didn't say that. But so what? He said, well, if they help, they'll nuke them. I said, subhanAllah, you would rather kill two million people than help because you are scared? I said, brother, sorry. That's not what our religion is about. Our religion is about helping the destitute. Our religion is about what Harun Rashid did when Rustum, the emperor, he went into the Muslim land, destroyed the, destroyed the men, and kidnapped the woman, a lady. Uh, uh, he, he, sent, he, sent, he, sent, uh, he sent an army to them. And Al-Mu'tasim too. When a lady said, Wa Mu'tasima, Oh, Mu'tasim, where are you? I'm being kidnapped, I'm a Muslim. He sent an army to fight. As somebody said, and I'll say it in Arabic, it doesn't make sense in English, but I'll translate it. Na'kulu jub wa na'ishu jub. We eat cheese and we are cowards. Na'kulu jub wa na'ishu jub. We eat the cheese and we are cowards. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all among those who at least ease, try to ease the pain of their brothers and sisters all over the world who are destitute. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength to help as much as we can in the way we can. 
Allah subhanahu wa says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not asking you to do more than what you can do or what, what you can bear. أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه غفور رحيم. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it's very hard to speak about these things. But it's also harder not to have the feeling and the urge to communicate this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, cold is a form of punishment. Cold is a form of punishment. Same as fire is a form of punishment. The Zamharir, Al Ghassaq, these are form of cold. So the scholars said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish in the hellfire in, in the fire and also in the cold. And the people of the fire will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, get us near, near to the Zamharir. He will get them near, they will feel cold. Oh Allah, send us back to the hellfire. So these two things, and that's what Allah subhanahu wa says about the people of Jannah. لا يرون فيها شمسا ولا زمهرير. They are neither very hot, from a sun-like hotness and they don't feel cold. Neither you are hot, nor you are cold. That's in Jannah. So our goal is really to reach Jannah. In order to reach Jannah, we have to act now. We have to work now. We cannot wait. You cannot say tomorrow, after tomorrow, when, when I retire or when I uh, do this and when I do that. And the month of Ramadan is coming to us very soon in March. Now is the time to work and prepare ourselves for that month. Now is the time to prepare ourselves for Qiyam al-Layl. Now is the time if you want to make a vacation or take time off, is it, this is the time. And don't let days take you by and be like, المسوفين, that means I, I will do, I will do, I will do, I will do. Don't, don't, don't be like that. Act now. Do it now. And this is what we have to do, inshallah. And I, uh, I, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make us reach Ramadan while we are in good health, while we are capable in order to worship him and reap the reward of the month of Ramadan. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease the pain of the Muslims around the world, and especially those in Gaza, to feed their, uh, uh, to feed their, 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 their hungry. And there's a difference between hunger and starvation. They are really in starvation. Hungry when you are hungry and then you are going to eat. Starvation is when you don't have anything to eat. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, give cure for their sick. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their martyrs. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to close them, to give them warmth, and to make them prevail over their enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, inna Allahu malaikatu yusalluna al nabi, ya ayuhal ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وأخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا 
ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا اللهم كره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله You straighten your line and fill all the gaps and uh, get rid of all your worldly thoughts and pray as if you uh, are departing this life <coughs> in a few moments. And remember you are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so make dua for the destitute Muslims all, all over the world inshallah. Allahu Akbar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والضحاء والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلاء وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجرك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين 
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والتين والزيتون وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاك الله خيرا أخي عصام for reminding us that our goal is جنة and any meaningful goal needs a plan. So your brothers and sisters, your brothers tonight, inshallah, prepare to you a plan for Ramadan. Guide how to plan for Ramadan, inshallah, in the family halaqa. Uh, come join them, inshallah, and, 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 and get ready for Ramadan. The discussion starts right after Asha, bi'idhnillah. And a reminder, on your way out from the parking lot, if you can, jazakallah khairan, if you can, take a right, don't take a left. That will clear the parking lot much faster if you take a right. Jazakumullah khair. 